6,920 pounds. Pretty darn light considering the size of this thing. Much lighter than a lot of fifth wheels this size in today's market. Uh, a flagstaff, I don't know, 30 foot ish rear living with a living room super slide coming in on trade here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. They're just swapping it up for an updated, modernized big sister, that Rockwood triple slide that you see over there. And I tell you what, if they take care of that thing the way they took care of this thing, uh, someone's going to be very happy with that Rockwood when they decide to get rid of it too. Other than on the outside here, um, a little decal fade. You can see that the nose decals have just kind of been power washed off for the most part. Overall, I mean, especially considering the year, I'm having a really hard time finding anything I dislike about this thing and really criticizing it all too much. It's pretty good looking. And it's kind of funny how things go in cycles. What was old is new again, kind of like, you know, as a 90s kid listening to 90s music, a lot of it was just the 70s stuff rehash, which probably explains why, at least to me, a lot of 90s music was pretty good, of course. I think music is one of those things that kind of filters out by the decade. Uh, the good stuff rises to the top. The not-so-good stuff kind of falls off, and you forget about that bad song that even good bands wrote. Wow, I got way, way off topic here. Uh, anyway, I think you get the idea. What I was getting at is this white uh, interior. Um, Rockwood used to call it Tuscan Cream, and it's funny how things like, you know, the Eagle Modern Farmhouse kind of keyed back into what used to be popular, then fell out of favor, then comes back around. Kind of like how bell-bottom pants became called flares. Again, I'm, I'm back to talking about 90s stuff. Never mind. Anyway, um... The, uh, our team actually beat me to the punch in getting the slide open on this one. Um, so I don't have slide close footage, but I will tell you that uh, you need to do one thing to close the slide. You do need to move that chair right there. You have to kind of slide it in front of the chair that's to its left right now as we're facing it. And then you close the slide. Um, also, with the slides closed, you can slip between the slide and the kitchen counter. So you can access the kitchen storage, the bedroom, the bathroom without opening the slide up. Very traveling friendly that way. Um, now, I also, I, I like to try to find, I actually will go out of my way to find something that isn't perfect on a used RV, if I can. Um, so that you know that I'm not just blowing smoke at you, so that I'm being fair. And really, all I found is that you see these little chair legs, they've kind of gouged that little trim at the bottom a little bit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the worst thing that I can say about the inside of this RV. I can't find a leak. I did find a spider, but he is, um, he's in spider heaven now. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the uh, long story short is, she looks good. I mean, tons of windows. Now, there's so many big windows here. Oh, hello. We must have just got disconnected from the truck, and that was the CO detector saying, I'm low on battery. But check out these big windows here, and you're going to see more as we go around the dinette. It's what Rockwood called atrium windows. And, I mean, there's dual-section day-night shades around here as well. And I even love the little mirrored inserts on a lot of the cabinet doors. You'll see that, uh, like, up in the bed-bath area as well. Um, the kind of peninsula-style upper kitchen cabinet right here giving us more storage. But again, that is kind of a classic feature that sort of fell out of favor. But what I love about that is it often came with, as you see right here, the Rockwood Breakfast Bar. And I'm a sucker for bar stools. I just, I just am. It takes me back to my childhood, basically. Um, I like that stainless appliance bundle. And there is a nice size pantry to the left of that refrigerator. It is tucked back just a couple inches, so it's kind of easy to miss. I want to make sure I point that out. Um, as I uh, spin my way around, baby, right around, you're going to find that this thing has uh, all the original electronics. And, uh, you know, not not bad. You know, it's, it's nice to see that the folks, like, weren't scavenging. Holy crap! I don't think a lot of people even know what this is today. This is even the old, like, XM kind of radio receiver job right here. That's only the second time I've ever seen one of those modules actually make it in with a used RV. That is wild. Those things, for some reason, people just didn't use them. They threw it away. They lost them. Whatever the case may be, it's cool that they're all there. Now, chances are that device will do you next to no good. But what's cool is, once again, it's an indicator that whoever owned this kept it in one piece, did a good job taking care of it. They weren't scavengers. That's a good indicator here. By the way, nice residential ceiling fan up top to keep some air moving around. We do have central air, central heat. Love those big, big windows, baby. Now, this has a classic, what's called split bath upper deck, where the bedroom and bathroom are one room. Now, there is 
a uh, uh, like accordion style door right here as we walk up and you can see there is a privacy curtain there. So if you have a guest on the sleeper sofa in the living room that we passed already, they could get to the bathroom without making direct line of sight to you. But most of the time this is just a couple's camper. It's not really made for a bunch of bunch of guests. Normal, you know, his and hers kind of thing. Um, if you look up here, you see what, let me get up here. You're like, oh man, they must have had a leak. It looks rusty. And then I look down here and you can actually see my fingerprint. It's just some kind of weird rusty dust. I'm going to guess it's a collection uh, uh, where like an AC vent probably blew a lot and collected particulate up there. And maybe they camped, I don't know, around Georgia where they got that red dirt, you know. I spent a uh, summer in America's Georgia. I got familiar with that red clay dirt down there. Um, I also learned that in different parts of the country, things like a sausage McMuffin with cheese from, uh, you know, McDonald's, they will ask you if you want to put jelly on it. No judgment, just a thing that I learned. It's kind of cool how many differences um, and, uh, you know, variances we can celebrate even within our own country. 60 by 80, true uh, residential queen walk-around bed here. Now, it's a classic fifth wheel. Classic fifth wheels had bigger step-ups. Keep that in mind. But typically, if you're beside the bed, it's because you're already pretty much crawling in bed anyway. It's not a feature that ever bothered me. I know it does bother some people. I'm pointing it out so that if you're one of the people that bothers, you can be made aware of it before you make a three-hour trek to Haylet RV and are disappointed with your experience here. That's the last thing I want. I want you to come here and have a good time, complete a purchase with us, and I'm willing to earn your business to do it. Now, this right here is a big closet, and you can see some dresser drawer space below as I weave my way over. Ooh, you got a nice little picture of my legs there. And they had um, put this little shoe organizer up there. You could pop that out very easily and just have an extra closet space. And if my eyes don't deceive me, the other thing they did is this is not factory standard right here. They... Uh, very nicely, uh, mind you, cut the hole in the wall and add another one of those little shoe organizers in here. Because if you look inside, you can see the back side of it over there. So they actually did a, a really interesting job coming up with some extra bathroom linen space, which I, I think is very smart. Extra large vent fan up here. That's one of those things that uh, the Rockwood Group, which Flagstaff here that we're in, is a clone thereof. I probably said the word Rockwood before. As a Rockwood dealer, they're the name that comes to mind. And the Flagstaffs that you see on the market... They're the exact same thing physically. They're they're the clone sister product, but for some reason, Rockwood outsells Flagstaff two to one, so it has a little higher resale value. Um, one other thing I want to mention: I know a lot of people aren't super hot to try about these split baths, but look at the floor space you get in here. If you're a big person like me, you can actually get dressed in here. And I can't tell you how many bathrooms frustrate me when they don't leave you space to literally put on a pair of pants. It's nice to be able to actually have the room to get dressed up here. One other thing I forgot to mention, I, I noticed it on my way up and out, and I forgot to talk about it. Central vacuum system. Not a feature you normally found in this class, especially when this thing was built. One other little glitch thing here I spotted. I always like to be completely transparent. If you look, you will see there's actually some fracture stress uh, hot. This is actually from cold compression cracks in just the interior plastic panel of the laminated entry door. If I get my way around the back side here, you'll see there's absolutely nothing wrong with the door. It's just the interior sheeting. And again, this is from cold cracking. This material right here was not made to be super duper cold. This is kind of the same sort of material that a lot of people might use on the walls of a laundry room. And it works fine in a house where it's always climate controlled, but in a camper, when it goes through a couple Midwestern polar vortex winters, it cracks a little bit. Now, I'm not super jazzed about this, but I'm also not going to hide it from you. Know that you always get straight shooting from a Halid RV. Impressive pass-through outside here as well. You see how it goes from front to side to side. Just just serious cargo space. See how they put some of that damp rid stuff down uh, in there, those buckets, so that it doesn't smell musty, moldy, anything like that. It looks like exterior seals and, and maintenance and care and upkeep was done pretty regularly on this thing. Um, again, I'm... I'm having difficulty finding things that I dislike about it. Now, it, it's got some storage dust on it. Almost any RV trade in this time of year does. Like you can see, uh, and on the nose cap, it could use a power washing, but that's that's like, that's the worst I can really say about it. And that's the worst you can say about it, you're doing okay. The nose decals, obviously, like I mentioned when the video began, a couple of those have seen better days, or rather, 
they're not seen anymore. Um, also, a couple side decals here and there where they get a little thinner, like the little lower sweep on the G in Flagstaff. They have just kind of sun faded and peeled and flaked a little bit. Kind of a bummer, but it, hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to lie about it. Overall, though, you could do a heck of a lot worse than the way the exterior of this thing looks. Um, this also has an enclosed underbelly for a little bit of that uh, extra protection, which is nice. Like anything made by this manufacturer, it has four-wheel independent torsion axles and suspension, which gives you excellent, excellent ride and handling. Um, previous owners must have done some doubles towing, like they must have put a little boat or something back here, because I see a two-inch receiver hitch and four-way wiring were added to it. Now, I wouldn't go too crazy back there, but if you got a little flat-bottom, aluminum-bottom boat, you should be good to haul something like this. Um, I think... Yeah, I think we're just about ready to hop up to the roof. Like I said, the fact that there's not a ton to note out here is good. It means that it's it's all doing and looking exactly the way it's supposed to. And the roof looks pretty much exactly how I expected it to look. Um, the uh, membrane's obviously been cleaned with regularity. The TV antenna's been updated, something a little more modern and digital versus analog only. Um, also, you'll see over the bedroom, the living room, and the bathroom, uh, air vent covers so that you can have the vents open anytime for some nice fresh airflow anytime. The seals look okay. I can tell that they've been peeled and sealed and replaced at least once. I will say that they're probably approaching a touch-up cycle. Other than that, like I can see certain spots like right there around that antenna. They were proactive. They were doing their touch-ups. You can actually see another instance of that back here by the ladder. So this RV has been actively maintained, not pro, uh, not not reactively, but proactively, and that's <laughs> that's good because, as I've said a hundred times, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I hope I'm shielding the uh, microphone enough because it is a windy son of a gun. So I am going to get off of this thing, and I welcome you to give us a call. Because whether it's new, used, or otherwise, we got just about anything and everything you can imagine looking for right here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halid camping, everyone.